Star Fox is one of my favorite video games of all time. The original game was released for the SNES in 1993, and just saying that makes me feel, well, vintage. By today's standards, the game is slow and clunky, but these kinds of graphics on a home console were revolutionary, so I guess I should be thankful. It was partly due to hardware limitations of the time that we got the sharp and angular design of the R-Wing. This model was taken directly from the game and weighs in at 56 polygons. It was used for cutscenes in the game, while this model is the one you saw on screen most of the time, coming in at a mere 20 polygons. By comparison, most games today render thousands of polygons on screen without breaking a sweat. I love the design of the R-Wing, and I love 3D printing, so now I have this. It's mostly the cinematic model found in-game with some minor tweaks to make it printable. It came out great, but honestly it's a little boring to look at in real life. So I went about creating a higher resolution version based on promotional art for the game. I also used art found in a comic strip that ran in Nintendo Power Magazine, but without any more photos of the original model, I had to go it alone from here. With a little improvisation, this is what I came up with. And what kind of Star Fox video would this be if I didn't make it do a barrel roll? And here's the printed result. Sorry the details don't show up too well in this shot. Actually, if you'd like to see it up close, I've made both versions available on Thingiverse, so you can print your own R-Wing. Of course, it's not enough to have a cool R-Wing model. I wanted to add lights that flash like they do in-game. Here I'm soldering some mini NeoPixels. They measure 3.5mm square and should just barely fit into the model after adding all the wiring. To power and program the lights, I'm using an Arduino board, or more specifically, the Adafruit Metro. It turns out that coding the lights to fade from one color to another is trickier than I thought it would be. Luckily, I was able to find a code generator online that helped. I'll link it in the description. After a little cleanup, I primed the model with R-Wing White and G-Diffuser Blue. I decided at this stage to start feeding the wires into the model. I was worried for a moment, but everything fit nicely. A small channel was carved here to hide the wires leading to the wings.
I wanted the cockpit windows to have a glass-like surface, so I cut out some pieces of clear plastic and painted the back of them black. This leaves the front side nice and glossy, while giving it a black finish. The chamber for the lights were covered in the same way, but this time the plastic was scuffed up to help diffuse the light. They were then painted to match the color of the lights. A little epoxy was used here to hold the panels in place. I hope I never have to get in here to repair anything. A small amount of putty was used here to hide the channel for the wires. It was later blended and painted over. I then designed a base that would fit the Arduino. The same trick that was used on the cockpit windows was repeated here by painting the back of this plexiglass black. Almost unbelievably, the stand and wires fit perfectly in place. The Arduino was mounted to the base and everything was wired up. Now, let's see what this R-Wing can do. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can be sure to expect more video game themed projects in the future. Until then, I'm Nicholas DeMario of SterlingKisses.com. Thanks for watching.